Well, once again, folks, thank you very much for clicking on my video. I almost sound like Rob Wells when I said that on my video. Uh, if you don't know who Rob Wells is, he's the guy that looks like Santa Claus that does a lot of, uh, oh, I think his channel is Cheap RV Living, where he basically is one of the nomad van life people, one of their uh, pioneers. Nice guy, does good videos, but he's a little quirky in his personality sometimes, but I really do enjoy his videos a lot. But anyway, again, thanks for clicking, and what we're looking at today is a Smith & Wesson 351C. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know, but just in case you don't, this is an airweight J-frame 22 Magnum revolver. And as you can see, we're empty right now. We're going to try to play it safe for the YouTube people. Um, I've wanted one of these for a long time. And finally here, and I'll start doing some real close-ups and pans when I'm talking. But finally here, I guess it was about, oh, a couple of months ago or so, I was able to do some trading with uh, my PMR30, which you may remember. Apparently those are pretty hard to get now, but I was able to do some horse trading and traded off that PMR30 for this. And I am very pleased to own one. Now this particular sample has not been shot outside of the factory. And that's something I really like right there is that excess sight system with that U channel in it. This particular one, the prior owner had ordered some snap caps apparently, loaded up with snap caps and was dry firing it and somehow or another the cylinder got stuck. <clears throat> so he had to send this firearm back to Smith have them fix it and in the process Smith went through the whole thing and uh, they got the stuck casing out and they did some test firing and uh, has not been fired since which is a shame isn't it as soon as now I have carried it some as you can see by a little bit of wear in a couple of places on it but yeah as soon as I get a chance I'm going to get this to the uh, the backyard range up in Arkansas and we'll do some shooting with it and see but these are really unique firearms. Now, I know a lot of people might snub a 22 Magnum for self-defense, and uh, you know I don't I don't blame you uh, for that. I mean, th there there are definitely better options, but for many people that are extremely recoil sensitive, they often have to look at a rimfire of some sort for self-defense, and so that's why. It's good that we have these options. Look at that little uh, countersunk in the barrel. That's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about dropping and damaging the... Uh, uh, my mind just went blank. The crown. <laughs> so, but yeah, sometimes, you know, 20, a, a rimfire might be the only option that you have. And if you're going to be shooting a rimfire, I would rather have seven rounds of 22 mag, which is what this shoots versus eight rounds of 22. Now, I do have an eight round 22 revolver in the similar to this, which is the Ruger LCR, a hammerless design. Uh, and that's the direct competitor to this, but this one comes in a little bit lighter and we'll do some weighing so y'all can see the differences between them here in a few minutes. But I just wanted to do my typical slow pans first and let y'all see this. Now, these are very lightweight more so than like a 642 because of the fact that the cylinder on these is actually aluminum. It is not a steel cylinder. It's an aluminum cylinder. And you can see they do some sort of anodizing on it like they do with the rest of the, the rest of the frame. Obviously, without a full-length ejection rod, you're not. You're going to have to do some shaking to get the uh, get the cartridges, get the 22 Magnum cartridges out of there. 
and you can see Smith actually has done like right here this beveled section on this side mount this groove is unusually deep for a Smith air weight. Now a lot of that probably help is attributed to the excess sight system, but they also have grooves cut in the back right here for weight savings. That's why they cut these extra grooves. And it has a lanyard ring, which is very nice, I thought, you know, especially since a lot of people might use this as a kit gun. But you can see on the underside of the trigger guard right here, they have some scallops cut out for uh, weight savings. And even on the bottom of the lug, Look at that. Pretty nifty. So you can look at the specs and see what this weighs, or we can weigh the one that I have here and we'll see where we come in at. So I used to buy and trade a lot of pool cues. A lot of you who know me probably are aware of that. And I can tell you, if you want to be see someone who's sensitive to weight, uh, find someone shopping for a pool cue that demands it must weigh between 19.25 and 19.5 ounces or else they can't make a ball with it. In reality, a lot of those guys, those pool cue guys, uh, you can give them a cue that weighs 21 ounces and tell them it weighs 19 and they're not going to be able to tell. But because of that, I, I told you that to tell you this, I always use this little 500 gram calibration device, which is 17.6 ounces. I always like to use that whenever I'm weighing something that way I can make sure my scale is accurate. Now let's go ahead, I'm just curious how accurate this scale is now that I'm saying that. Let's put it in grams and see if this measures at 500 grams here. Ooh, look at that, one gram off. My gosh, I should throw this scale away. Not bad for a scale, though, that was, I think, 18 bucks or something on Amazon. Let's see what this thing is coming in at. 11.4 ounces unloaded. Let's go ahead and put six rounds of my preferred, or I'm sorry, seven rounds of my preferred carry ammo on here. Okay, we'll cut back in here. I don't know how much I'm going to leave that in here, y'all, but I, that's funny. I don't care who you are. I'm trying to put these little rounds on here to weigh them, and they start rolling everywhere. And um, <laughs> then my um, phone proceeds to fall over. Oh my gosh, look at that. We got seven rounds on there without any of them rolling off. 12.5 ounces. Y'all who don't know, that's pretty light for a carry, a carry firearm. So by comparison purposes, what we're also going to do is take a look at a Smith & Wesson 642, which is the ever popular five round J frame. So let me show you what that weighs. All right, so let's take a look first at an unloaded, as you can see, 642. 14.5 ounces. Now, that, I mean, that alone shows you we're talking almost a four ounce difference, almost a three ounce difference, a little over three ounce difference between that and the unloaded um, 351C. Let's just take a quick peek in. 14.5 on the Smith on the 642. 351C, 11.4. That's quite a bit of difference, folks. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're the type that carries every day, you'll know that uh, a few ounces over the course of a day, and we're going to go ahead and put five rounds of 38 on here, my preferred carry ammo in these things. You'll know that um, those three ounces makes a lot of difference. 17 ounce fully loaded. Now, before any of y'all ask, which I'm sure you will, what in the world kind of round is that that the hillbilly carries? This is an Underwood uh, ammo wad cutter. 
And uh, these, they're not a plus P round, but let me tell you what, they're loaded pretty darn hot. And I'm a big believer in wad cutters for uh, self-defense purposes in a firearm. You can watch, you know, Google and all that good stuff or look at some other YouTube videos to see the reasoning behind that. Next one, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is the this is just for weight comparison. This is a Ruger LCR and 22 long rifle, and you've got eight rounds instead of seven. But you've also got 14.9 ounces of firearm unloaded versus the 11.5 on that 351C. Now, a lot of y'all, obviously, a lot of that's coming from the steel cylinder. So let's go ahead and put. Uh, my current carry around for, oh, these are uh, Velocitors, 15.9 ounces. Again, not a, we're not talking major numbers and stuff like that, but for someone who pocket carries the majority of the time, again, every little bit helps. And lastly, let's do another popular pocket carry of mine which is an LCP2 in 380. This one is loaded, folks, so I'm not gonna bother to, to unload it, but it is loaded condition one, so. 13 ounces. And that is the reason why this is usually my preferred carry. A six plus one of 380 at 13 ounces is hard to beat. Um, I know, of course, that the original LCPs are a little bit a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller in profile, but like most people, I like the LCP2 uh, for quite a few reasons. But back to the subject of this video, we're going to go ahead and close this out and we'll do one more slow pan over this beautiful revolver. Take a look at that nice bezel again, or I keep on calling it a bezel, you know what I mean, the crown, that nice recessed crown. And that's it, folks. As always, thanks for watching this video. Y'all let me know if you have any questions, you know, just put them down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, please take the moment to do that and be sure to click that thumbs up button. That really helps a lot. Have a great day out there. Y'all stay safe.